Hello everyone, welcome to TCG Talk and we're back with another video. Today we're going to change things up a little bit. We've been doing a lot of deck tech videos because I love deck brewing um, and we've done a couple other type of videos like the top heroes in the game right now. Um, but one thing I wanted to do and one thing I've been thinking about is I'm still pretty relatively new to Flesh and Blood. Not so much new to TCGs, but definitely new to Flesh and Blood. And one thing I wanted to do is kind of give new players some tips on not exactly how to play the game exactly like with strategies, but on, you know, just some things you can do to make your game experience more enjoyable. TCGs are extremely overwhelming. Uh, most of the people that play TCGs are basically fanatics about it. They get good at the game pretty quickly or relatively good. And for a new player, it can be really daunting because you're not really weighing all the time. You don't have access to all the cards that everybody else might have. Um, and there's just a lot of hurdles for new players to really get into the game. But once they get into the game, they're hooked. It's just that initial, you know, getting acclimated to the game, understanding the best way to go about it so you don't spend too much money and all that sort of stuff. So I wanted to make a couple, uh, give you a couple tips on how to make the beginning of your flesh and blood experience the most enjoyable. And I have seven tips here. I'll go, I'll go through them pretty quickly. Um, but it's just for if you're if you're a player yourself, maybe you're a parent or an older individual that's trying to get a kid or maybe a, a group of people into the game. This is the best way to go about doing it. Um, number one for me is Blitz decks. Flesh and Blood has an amazing like starter set or starter deck uh, type thing. So one thing that they do is they have two main modes. They have a bunch of different modes in the game, but. The two main ones are Classic Instructed, which is like the main part of how they want to play, which is 60 cards. Um, you start with 40 life and things like that. And those games go to, you know, 20 to 30 minutes, ideally. Um, and then you have what's called Blitz. Blitz is like the quick play version of it where you start only with 20 life and you only have 40 cards. And the good thing about Blitz is Flesh and Blood makes what's called Blitz decks. Uh, these are from the new Tales of Aria set. Um, and then in Monarch, they made four Blitz decks, one for each hero. Each of these Blitz decks runs from $10 to $14, and it's a completed Blitz deck out of the box. So you can take the Lexi deck, open it up, get all the cards, and you can start playing right away. Um, and one thing I like about the Flesh and Blood Blitz decks, as opposed to like a Magic Blitz or Magic Starter deck, or any type of other TCG starter deck, is these decks are actually pretty decent. <laughs> They're not horrible. Um, obviously they can be upgraded and be made better, but you're not going to feel like you're un insane, insanely underpowered when you're playing with them. And if you're trying to get in the game and not spend a whole lot of money, maybe you want to try out one or two heroes, maybe even three. You can buy a, like a pack of three of these blitz decks for 30 bucks. You have three completed blitz decks from three different heroes and you can really try out different things and see what you like. Um, I just think this is best entry. Most of your local game stores will have these um, and they're just awesome. Some low game stores might even still have the welcome decks that were free, but but if not, you can at least buy one or two decks for 10, 20 bucks and really get a good experience on how the game plays. So Blitz decks is the first thing you should do when you go to actually make your first purchase in the game. Definitely buy Blitz decks. Um, it's a must. The second thing is talk to your local game store. Uh, for me, our local one is Cape Fear Collectibles. Shout out to them. I'll leave a link to their description down below. Um, they're awesome. And most of the time your local game store is going to be your best resource, especially with Flesh and Blood. The difference between Flesh and Blood and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon to Magic is there's no online client, right? There's no Magic the Gathering Arena. There's no Flesh and Blood Arena uh, to play. It's Flesh and Blood is meant to be played in person. That's the reason they named it Flesh and Blood. They want it to be an in-person trading card game. Now with that, it creates its own new set of challenges, right? You can't just hop on Magic the Gathering Arena or hop on Flesh and Blood Arena or whatever their online client would be, you actually have to go and play with people. Um, and sometimes it's really taxing. But if you talk to your local game store, they can get you involved with events that's going on. They can help you with the Blitz decks or Star decks. If they, if you have a really good community like we have, you have uh, more experienced players that will sit down and teach you the game. Um, I know with our local game store, we have like a, a card box with all commons, like all the common cards. And when new players come in, we can literally build them a deck from it. Um, and so if they, even before they buy their blitz deck, we can give them a deck and be like, Hey, play with this deck. Let us know if you like the game. If you do, then we'll, we'll buy, we can buy some blitz decks. Um, so it's really useful for that. So talk to your local game store. Um, they're your best resource. They're your best friend with stuff like this. And it can be a little daunting and they can really help ease that transition. But the third one, uh, 
content creators watch them um this is the flesh and blood youtube channel uh they do learn to plays they do uh gameplay videos they'll do uh developer videos all types of stuff so you can learn um there's also a ton of of uh other content creators that talk a lot about this game team covenant they do everything tcg but they do a lot of flesh and blood stuff uh kitchen table tcg red zone rogue um, Tolarian Community College, who literally is probably the best one when it comes to teaching you how to play the game. If you want to learn the mechanics of the game, go to Tolarian Community College's YouTube link. I'll link it down below and look at his learn how to play guide. It's so good. It's so concise. And it's literally the best video on the internet to learn how to play flesh and blood. Arsenal Pass is really good. Once you start to get into the game a little bit more competitively, they do a lot of competitive based stuff and like really in-depth stuff. So there's a ton of content creators um, go watch them, digest the game, learn about the community, because that's just going to make you even more ingrained into it and make you want to play it more. It's really good. So that's your next tip. Um, next, I would find a hero you identify with. And this is where those Blitz decks or maybe your local game store being able to give you a deck for free, who knows, um, comes into handy. The cool thing, the cool thing about Flesh and Blood, as opposed to Magic or other games, is it's hero based. You are you are representing a hero that you identify with. For me, my favorite one is Katsu, um, the ninja hero. Yours might be Dorinthio at Warrior, or maybe it's Chain or Viscerai in Runeblade. Uh, you know, what I mean, maybe you like Bravo Guardian. Uh, you know, what I mean. So there's a bunch of different ones, and Flesh and Blood's website at fabtcg.com. They will give you a page on each hero, and you can look at the about section to learn about them. Um, they have, you know, hero highlights. They talk, they talk about the lore of the hero. They give you like key cards in his set. Um, they give you a whole story about him. Uh, and they also give you key cards that you should, you should try to look and pick up. They give you all these resources. They give you videos on him playing other heroes. So you can really be like, okay, this hero represents me the best. I really like this hero. I'm gonna play this one. Um, and when you do that, it's just going to get you into the game that much more. Um, and you're going to end up loving it. Uh, and it saves you money. Once you find a hero you can identify with, then you just focus on their cards, and you don't have to worry about buying a whole lot of cards and stuff like that. Um, for the next one, at number five, start with common cards. Uh, the one thing I wanted to mention is everybody always always like, oh, I got to get the rare cards or the super, or super rares or the majestics, right, or the legendaries in order to have a good deck. That's just not true. Um, if you want to play in an event, sure. But if you want to be competitive at your local game store, you could literally build a, a deck with all commons and a couple rares and be competitive. You win some, you'll lose some, and you can upgrade as necessary, but don't be afraid to just get the common cards. I brought this card up on purpose. This is Snapdragon Scalers, which you'll honestly get in a lot of packs in Welcome to Wraith. Um, it's a common card that's really good. It gives your next, it gives an attack that you just played. If you play this on top of it, then you get to go again, right? You get to play another card. It's used in a lot of different decks. It's kind of a staple common equipment card at legs. Um, it's 15 cents, right? So you don't have to buy 30, 40, 50 dollar cards uh, to be good at this game or to have an enjoyable experience. You can buy common cards that will be just as good. Um, so don't be afraid to buy those cards. It's it's um don't make people think that you have to buy expensive cards in order to be good at the game or to enjoy the game. Uh, there's tons of common cards. You can even look up decks that are made just from commons and a couple rares. And rares normally are like a buck or two, depending on the on the rare. So they're not even that expensive. So don't think you have to get these giant fifty dollar enlightened strikes in order to be good at the game. It's just not not true. For the next one, um, avoid buying booster boxes to chase cards or to think you to get you a good deck. Um, booster boxes, yes, will give you access to a ton of cards. Um, personally, I would buy booster boxes to enjoy the game just as a whole, like some people love crack and packs, right? Or if a new set comes out like Tales of Aria just did, and you just want to enjoy the set and whatever you pick, you get, you get, and if you get good pulls, it's awesome, but you're not like buying, you're not spending $116 to try to get good cards, right? That's just dumb. Use common cards, you know, play with practice cards, all this other stuff, which I'll get into in my next step. It's the most important one when it comes to building your first like full deck. Um, Find what cards you want and what cards you like, and then buy those specific cards. If you're trying to build a deck, buying booster boxes is not net positive for your money. Buy booster boxes because you enjoy the game, because you want to try a new set or a set you haven't ever tried before, and you want to have a lot of access to cards, 
or if you just want to have fun cracking packs, that's a good reason to buy a booster box. Do not buy a booster box to chase a card or to try to build a good deck. It's just, it's not good for your money. Um, and then the last thing I suggest doing is proxy cards. So let's say you start, you get the Blitz decks. Let's say you get a, a free deck from your local game store. And let's say it's Katsu. And you just love Katsu. And you and you have a barely based deck. But now you've been playing for a few weeks. And you want to get some you know super rares or some Majestics from Katsu or legendary equipment like Mask and Momentum. Um, what I suggest doing is go to fabproxy.com. Um, and fabproxy.com. And what you can do is you can make what's called proxy cards. Now, some people that aren't new, aren't like seasoned in the TCGs won't know what this is. People who've played TCGs a long time know that the people do this, but you literally can add any cards you want. So like, let's say you want to play with mask and momentum for, um, Katsu. You can type this in. There it is right there. You add the card, you can add a whole deck to this and then print this off and cut them out and put them in sleeves. That doesn't sound like the coolest thing to do at first, right? But what it's going to do is it's going to let you practice with that deck. And if you like the deck, then you can go buy the cards. People make the mistake of buying cards and doing all this stuff and um, buying cards and, and getting all these decks. And then they end up not liking the deck and they try new cards and then they just keep wasting money, right? Not all of us have money to just blow on, on this stuff. So use proxy cards. Most people that are seasoned in TCGs are not going to mind. If you say, hey... I'm using a proxy deck because I'm thinking about buying these cards. Like as long as it's not a tournament, it's just a friendly game. Be like, Hey, I'm using these proxy cards. I want to see how this deck is before I spend my money on it. Is that okay with you? Nine times out of 10, they're going to be like, yeah, sure. That's fine, man. No worries. Um, and so that, that, that's what you should do. Go to fabproxy.com, make your whole deck how you want it. Make sure it's stuff that you actually are going to buy or want to buy and then print it off and use them as proxy cards. You can even sleeve them and they'll look just like a real deck. Um, I have it right here where I, I would open this, but this is my Visceri deck and I have a few proxy cards in there right now that I wanted to try out. Um, I ended up liking them and then I bought the cards. So it's really useful for that. Um, don't waste your money on cards that you haven't tested or that you don't hundred percent know you like, especially if you're getting a card like mask momentum or any card that's like in this range, this card alone is $120. I don't want to buy this card and then end up not liking it. So I'm going to make a proxy card, play with it, figure out I like it and then buy it. So that's what I would do. So yeah, for the seven tips, pick up a blitz deck, talk to your local game store, um, watch content creators, pick a hero you identify with, start at commons and work your way up. Avoid buying booster boxes to chase cards and use proxy cards. Um, each of these tips will help you kind of have a more enjoyable starting experience, especially if you're a beginner, even if you're not new to TCGs, but you're new to flesh and blood, this is the best way I would go about learning flesh and blood. Um, I think it's a really useful tool and yeah, that's what I suggest for you all. But, um, sorry if you hear my dog, he's whining at me cause I'm talking. Uh, but yeah, if you like the video, like comment and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate it. it really helps out the channel it really helps more people see the channel. If you don't want to do it to me, go to another flesh and blood creator. Um, and like, comment, and subscribe on their stuff. We need more people to see this game. Um, if you find someone else that you find more useful than me, that's totally fine. Like I said, I'm going to link to Larian Community College's Learn How to Play down below, as well as a couple other Flesh and Blood creators if you want to watch them. Um, and I'll also link our local game store if you want to order some online product from them because they're awesome people. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time on TCG Talk. Thank you.